friends, welcome back to my channel. Sass here. I'm here to do another review of Life After Laka. I want to say thank you for showing me all kinds of love on um, the last video of Life After Laka. I appreciate it. I know it takes a lot to just watch someone sitting on the couch reviewing a show and you know I try to change it up a little bit. You know make y'all laugh just a little bit more so I appreciate y'all. Y'all <laughs> y'all kill me in them comments. <laughs> I tell you. But anyway. One more episode left. One more. And it will be a wrap. It will be the season finale. So let's just talk about it. Let's talk about Not Quite Right Clint and Crackhead Tracy. Now, as we know, Clint, he's knocking on his door trying to get, you know, inside. Honey, Tracy finally let him in, but boy, I cracked up when Clint came in there and was like, you were gone for two days, and honey, Crackhead Tracy said, I sure the hell did. I was gone for two days, honey, living my best life, getting high, but see, I had to come back because I ain't got nothing. I threw on this blue eyeshadow, smudged lipstick, hair looking all greasy. Honey, crackhead Tracy look a mess. Honey, she is grabbing clothes. She's hanging. She's holding on to her clothes with them hangers. Talk about she's gonna leave, honey. Clint was like, get the F out. Clint was like, get out. I want you to go to rehab. Well, of course, Tracy, she said that she's not going to rehab. She's not ready for rehab. She's all about the crack of cocaine. All right. So Clint and her are going back and forth screaming and yelling at each other. So what does you know, not quite right, dude. He calls his mommy, Mom! Mom! Tracy, let me in my house, Mom! What do I supposed to do, Mom? <laughs> Crackhead Tracy was laughing herself to death, was she? She was like, that's right, a 40-year-old, call your mommy, call your mommy, call your Bobby. <laughs> so, of course, here Mama Clint, Clint! Get out of there, Clint! Come stay with us, Clint. There's nothing more you can do, Clint. I hear you there, Mom. I'm going to stay with you, Mom. So, of course, you know Tracy. She's in the background rolling her eyes, smoking 18 cigarettes, looking like, who done it? What for a child? So, after they calmed down a little bit, she was looking for some things, and then she says, what did you do with the sonogram? He was like, I didn't do anything with it. He was like, now, I don't think I threw it away. I wouldn't have thrown that away. See, I didn't throw away the sonogram like you threw away our child. I was like, oh. Not quite right. Clint has some sense about right now. So apparently, Tracy, she had gotten pregnant and um, she had an abortion. Very sad. Very sad. She says that they came to a decision because they felt like, you know, they couldn't afford a child. Uh, them drugs didn't have nothing to do with it, uh, Tracy. <laughs> so anyway, she decided to, you know, get rid of the child. Very sad. I mean, very sad. Tracy and Clinton's relationship is sad. I know I make jokes and... You know, I try to lighten the mood, but Tracy and Clint's relationship is a very sad, sad um, situation, sad relationship. Tracy starts crying. She's on the bed. Of course, you know, Clint, he has to go and console her, and he's still talking about rehab. He says that he does not want his goddess to go back to jail. He wants her to go to rehab. Now, he ain't said nothing about himself. Now, you cannot convince me that that man is not on drugs as well. You cannot do it. So, anyway, um, they're laying in bed and they're consoling each other. Tracy done got to cry. It's not flying. Clint, he don't know what to do. He don't want to leave. This is why he loves her. That's the goddess. And at this moment, I think that they were, you know, trying to work it out. And I think that she is willing um, to go to rehab. Okay, so at this point, 
in the, you know, episode, you know, him, Tracy, and the dog is okay. Oh, just a mess. All right, now let's talk about Latino Heat and Britney. I'm going to make this real short. Britney is upset with Latino Heat because he don't went and lied to her. Okay, so she gets with a homegirl, the one that was her bonky in the prison. Don't went to a homegirl, they done jumped into a truck, and they are sitting outside of prison where Sasha is. Now, most homegirls, you know, go out to get a, a drink or something to eat. They go and sit outside of prison. Brittany, if you don't take your tail home. Now, if y'all don't know, Sasha was Brittany's homegirl, okay? Sasha, which I like Sasha, okay? She got 10 years, okay? Because she did some, I believe, some drugs and some malicious wounding. I can't remember quite what it was. But honey, she went upside somebody's head and got busted for drugs. And so she's in prison for 10 years. And Brittany has already said that she's done loved her. She was her friend. Blah, blah, blah. So her homegirl's like, what was, what's her name, y'all? What's her homegirl's name? Amber. No, that ain't it. Y'all know. Put it down below with her homegirls. I put it across the screen. Uh, post, uh, I put it across the screen. So she was like, what's up? What's happening? What's, what's going on? And so Brittany is telling her that Latino Heat lied. Okay. Said that, you know, that he was at his cousin's house and come to find out he was at some woman's house talking about she's going to teach him how to play poker. And he, she was like, listen, she was like, I'm not even about that, okay? I have been lied to you my whole life. I don't want to be lied to, you know, when it comes to my husband, my man. And she was like, I, I just cannot believe he lied to me. So the homegirl was like, girl, you better check your, you know, your um, checking account. See if he ain't, you know, getting some money out. He must be hard up, okay? Where the money at? So, of course, Brittany said, man, I'm not even thinking about that, you know, checking account. You know, I, I haven't even checked it. I'm more upset that he lied to me on where he was at. So, they went back and forth. And the friend was like, listen, y'all going to have to, you know, talk this out. Brittany said she's going to have to go back and talk to him. She stands up and says, I love you, Sasha. Child, did y'all see them other inmates? Them inmates was looking around like, what is going? Who is that screaming from that truck? Child. Child, we have Latino heat. Sitting by the little fire, looking sad. He's sitting up pouting. Here comes Brittany. And he was like, you ready for round two? All right. Bottom line is, Latino heats want to provide for his children. He said that he grew up poor. And he don't want his family to be in that situation. He don't want his family to grow up po-po. He want his family to at least have something. So he thinks that this, you know, poker playing and, you know, trying to, you know, um, brush up on his skills will help them. You know, he wasn't trying to hurt Brittany. Of course, he loves Brittany. He don't want to lose Brittany because he says, listen, before I met Brittany, I was a hot mess. Okay? I was going down a wrong road. I was just out here. But when I met Brittany, she brought me back. She gave me a reason to live. Okay? She made me a better person, a better man, and, you know, I just I just can't lose her, you know, not like this. Brittany was like, listen, you can't be going around, you know, telling me lies. You just can't do it. I grew up with a father. You know, he was out there. He had a gambling problem. He was selling everything underneath the sun. We all know about my mama, okay? And I just can't be having that, not from you. I'm not going to have that with, for me or my children, okay? So what's, what's it going to be? Child. So, of course, Latino he and Brittany, you know, kissed and made up. Listen, I've always said I am rooting for Latino he and Brittany. I think that these two have a legitimate, you know, uh, relationship. I think they can make it, okay? So, Latino he told a little Hispanic lie. He learned from it. He didn't cheat, so he said that he was sorry. She forgives them. They said they love each other. Let's move on. Let's move on. Chat. All right, let's talk about.
about Angela and Tony. Child, it's two days from the wedding, and they are going to meet up with the wedding planners and the venue. Child, did y'all see the wedding planners? Jethro and Lula Bell. What's going on in Biloxi, Mississippi? I will say the little venue's nice. First thing I thought about was, as I go down in the river to pray, studying about them good old ways, who shall wear the robe and crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, darling, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, darling, let's go down, down in the river to pray. Listen, what y'all know about that movie? What do you know about that song? So they're out here at the venue with Lulu Bell and Jethro. Okay, so they're talking about the wedding. Of course, Angela let it be known that she's paying for it because uh, Tony ain't got no money. Now, I know Tony had a job, but you know, hey, that ain't for me to say nothing else about. Okay, if she like it, I love it. Okay, so the woman is like, okay, well, what about your groomsmen? They can stand right here. And honey, Angela was quick. Wasn't she? she was like, oh, he ain't got no groomsmen. He ain't got no friends, he ain't got no family, he ain't got no groomsmen, it's just him. And honey, Tony dropped a bombshell. Tony said, I don't know who you think you're talking to. I have a best man. Angela said, excuse me. Tony said that his homeboy that he was in prison with, Andre, <laughs> apparently lives where they live. And he is going to be his best man because, hey, Tony don't have no friends nearby. He don't have no family. The only one who can stand by him is Andre. Now, Andre was in prison for drugs. Of course, Angela, she is bent, okay? She is upset. She was like, how in the world is he going to be your best man when he was in prison with, with you, A, and B, he was in there for drugs? You're going to be laughing. You can't be around those type of people. You can't be around drugs. You're going to go right back to prison. And so, of course, Tony, if you don't calm down, I'm going to be all right. You're going to quit telling me what I can and what I can't do. I'm going to be just fine. Now, listen, Andre, he's going to throw me a little bachelor party, and that's that on that. Now, let's talk about this sad, but that, that was the saddest bachelor party I have ever seen. Honey, we have Tony. With some new kicks. Did y'all see his new Jordans? Mm -hmm. Then we have Tommy. Now, I don't really understand why Tommy's dad. The Tommy done threatened to kill this man. But Angela thought it was a good idea. And then we have Andre. Now, we, listen here. Okay? Life after lockup producers slash we. I'm going to need for y'all to do something about these stragglers that y'all keep bringing into this show. Y'all can't toss them a couple of dollars to get their teeth fixed. I'm tired of looking at all these convoluted fools with the yuck mouth. I'm tired of it. Did y'all see his one tooth? Not tooth. Tooth. Did y'all see that? Honey, that thing was just trying to kill itself. Honey, it was just trying to commit suicide. Did you see that thing, honey? When was the last time Andre bit an apple? When was the last time Andre bit any day hard, child? Honey, Andre living on soup. That's what Andre living on, child. Honey, that young buck was taking me all the way out. Honey, did you see all that aluminum foil at the bottom of it? What does mouth smell like, y'all? What does mouth smell like? Just a, just a travesty. Just a travesty, child. Just a mess. Okay. I'm going to need for the wee producers. Life out the lock up to get him into the dentist, child. We don't need to be seeing him, huh? Child, I'm tired of seeing these grown people with raggedy mouths. I'm tired of it, honey. Summer teeth. Some right here, some right there. Shout out to Chris Tucker. Now, we have Tommy, okay? Now, Tommy's there. He says that he's going to be watching over Tony because, you know, we know that he likes to cheat. And he don't want Angela to get hurt. <sighs> So Tony was like, why are you trying to be Captain Saber? Okay, there ain't nothing you can do about it. All right? Now, I know you have feelings for her, but Angela chose me. She didn't choose you. There ain't nothing you can do about it. Okay? Don't be coming up in here cutting a shot. And so Tommy was like, listen, you hurt Angela. I don't want to have to hurt you. So here comes Andre, aluminum foil mouth. Come talk about, wait a minute now, what's going on here? You got feelings for 
Angela? And so Tony said, word, mm -hmm. he love her. And so Andre said, oh, really? You love her. He said, well, let me just tell you something. This is my homeboy. This is good. I'm his best man, okay? You're about it, about it. I'm about it, about it, okay? Don't get me started. Don't you see my mouth? Don't you see this tooth? Okay, I will take your head off. Now, listen here, Tommy. Okay? Now, I know you took all those defense classes. Ha, cha, cha. But, honey, you better leave Andre alone. Okay, Andre will hurt you. He don't even have to touch you. All I think he got to do is go, he will take your head off, child, with that sharp tooth, child. Huh? Tommy, leave that man alone, okay? Leave it alone. Honey, when Andre was giving Tommy the business, Tommy didn't have too much to say. Tommy was outside talking to the producers, talking about, you're not going to intimidate me. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. Boy, if you don't shut up. <laughs> so here comes Tony getting a lap dance from one of those strippers, child. And here's Tommy videoing it. He sent that video to Angela's struggle voice. Of course, she gets pissed off. She jumps into her 1979 Plymouth, and she comes right up into the strip joint. Child, instead of Tommy worrying about Tony getting a lap dance, maybe he should have got him one. So here comes Angela, okay, busted up into the strip club. Can you imagine your mom, oops, I'm sorry, your fiance going up into the strip club and telling you to get the F out? Because that's exactly what she did. She told Tony, she said, how can I trust you? You up here at a strip club right before we get married, get your feet and take them to the street. Get the F out. And I mean now, quick, fast. And then her, you got two by one. Two. Here comes Tony. Tony said, man, I gotta go. All right, man. All right. I see you. I see you. Andre said, boy, you better get up out of here. <laughs> so Tony and Angela jump into the car, lean into the left. Cha -cha. Let's move on. All right. Let's talk about the Virginians. Oh, boy. So, as we know, Shane, he cheated on Lacey. Lacey went running to John. John took her back, and apparently they are back together. Now, they are in a vehicle, all right? In Lacey's vehicle, I assume John is driving, okay? So, now it's all about, you know, John and Lacey, and Lacey saying that she can't trust Shane, and, you know, how, you know, she wants to be with John. She gets a phone call or a text. John grabs her phone, and um, she was like, oh. Excuse me, I think not. Okay, that's my dad. He got my kids. Honey, that's just a running theme, ain't it? Your dad always have your kids. Always. So, of course, he was like, listen, okay, I was just playing. You know, I wasn't trying to look at your phone. You know, I'm just joking. And then, honey, John switched real quick. She was like, I am not testing him. And John was like, listen. Okay, I'm tired of this. You need to get him to F up out your house. That's what you do. And she was like, listen, I'm going to, I'm going to. He said, no, you need to do it now. You done got that man around your kids. He over there controlling your house. He's telling you what you can, what you can't do in your house. You need to get him out. You, you done met this man on a prison website. You done married this man. You done brought that man into your home around your kids. That is who you left me for. I want him to F up out that house. So, of course, you know, Lacey. She was like, why are you saying this to me? Why are you talking to me like this? John was like, listen, I'm fed the F up. You know, I'm not trying to hurt you. I'm not trying to make you cry. But you don't know nothing about this man. I want him out. Get him out of that house. So, of course, Lacey's saying that John, you know, has a quick temper. And she don't really like this side of John. She's concerned. Cow. Lacey also said that her and John did not have sex. She said that she's going to wait until Shane is out the house and they're divorced, you know. She want to do it the right way. Now, just uh, last week, she was showing him her 44 kids, but she want us to believe that they ain't had sex. Born and night, not last night. So they get home, 
Okay. So kissy kissy huggy huggy John he stays outside. Lacey goes inside her and her coochie cutters child. Here is Shane. Shane is laying on that bed playing a video game. Did y'all see them sweat stains? He said he just got home from work. You couldn't take a shower. You couldn't take off that shirt. You got them nasty sweat stains all up on that bed. Up on them pillows. That's a nice bed. Just nasty stinking. Honey, y'all know he smelled like Fritos. Honey, y'all know he smelled like all kinds of salt and vinegar potato chips. I can't do it. Mm -mm. So here's Lacey. Of course, Lacey is pumped in her head what John said. Get him out. Get him out now. I said get him out. So she's going in already, you know, pumped up. She's about it, about it. And honey, Lacey said, listen, okay, you cheated on me. I don't trust you. Get the F up out my house. <laughs> so Shane is confused by all this. Shane said, now, let me, let me get this straight. When she left this morning, she was straight. She done come back. She's all aggressive. Her chest is swollen up. What's going on? Who done put something into her head? So, of course, you know, Lacey said that she's sick of him, that she don't trust him no more. He's a cheater. He's a liar. Get the F out. Honey, she starts throwing things all up in a box, up in a bag, up in a basket, child. For somebody who just got out of prison and only been married a short period of time, honey, Shane had a whole bunch of clothes. Did y'all see all them jeans, Shane? <laughs> So anyway, of course, Shane was like, oh, so you, you want me to leave? You want me to leave? You want to ruin this marriage? Okay, I made a mistake. I'm young, okay? I just got out of prison. Boy, that ain't no excuse. That ain't no excuse whatsoever. He said, don't everybody make a mistake? Boy, how many mistakes have you had, Shane? How many times you been in and out of prison? Boy, you can miss me with that. Okay, you knew what you was doing laying up with that harlot. So anyway, they're going back and forth. Um, they're going back and forth. And of course, you know, Lacey, she was like, F you, get the F up out my house. She storms outside. Here comes Shane. Shane was like, don't be leaving me. Don't be going out this house. So he's standing outside. And he was like, you caused this. You did this. And who is walking up to him? John, honey. John come talking about Big Daddy home. I was like. So we know that Shane and John are going to have some type of encounter. I don't think it's going to be a beat down, but we'll see next week. All right. Let's get to the trio of fools plus Maria. <laughs> the quad of drama, okay? So we have all of the idiots outside of this hotel screaming, yelling, and cussing. Just cutting a shine, child. I want y'all to think about something. We have three women fighting over the likes of Michael. Now, I know I've said this before, but it just blows my mind. Blows my mind. And we have two men that are fighting over the likes of Angela. Mm. Sad times, friends. Sad times. So we have these idiots screaming and yelling and cussing. And here is, you know, um, and here is Sarah. I'm here because you need to go see your kids. You need to go see your kids. You promised her ice cream. You promised her ice cream. Here is Maria, all 65 years old. Honey, Maria allegedly is 35 years old. That's a hard 35. Hard 35. So she's screaming and yelling and cussing. Talking about that's my man. He's my man. Okay. Take yourself out. Okay. Only thing we got is space and opportunity. I will F you up. Meanwhile, Michael, honey. He looks like a whole 12-year-old. He jumping and screaming, talking about, get inside, get inside, get inside, screaming, yelling, cussing. Now, the management of the hotel say he tired of this Neapolitan or crazy. We got the Negro, we got the white, and we got the Hispanic. He tired of it. He said he tired of you colors. Oh, 
y'all, it ain't nothing but jokes. It ain't nothing but jokes. Laugh, hoes. Laugh. So anyway, so they out there fussing. Michael is all up in the management's faces, screaming and yelling. He jumping up and down, talking about, nobody better touch me. Don't touch me. Don't be touching me. I mean, just looking like a clown. He looked like a clown. Oh, my God. So, apparently, it was time for them to throw Michael and uh, Maria into a van. Okay? Here's Sarah. Get in the car, Michael. Get in the car. They call the police. Get in the car with me, Michael. Get in here, Michael. Get in the car. Maria. He ain't going in the car with you, honey. He leaving with me. Okay? Won't you worry about your kids? Go to your kids. Where your kids at? He leaving with me. Get in the car, Michael. They calling the law. Get in the car. Sarah's screaming for Michael to get in the car. Michael looks confused. He's still screaming about somebody touching him. <sighs> Maria and Michael jump into a van and they leave. Sarah is standing there looking like a fool on a stool. Honey, she's standing there looking like Ned in the funny papers. How much embarrassment does one woman take? How much? I mean, she is literally standing there crying. It's not fly. Okay, she says, I cannot believe he left me. He left me here. What am I supposed to say to my kids? She's supposed to have ice cream. He left me. Sarah, you jumped in your car in the dead of night. To go look for a man who don't care nothing about you. So you can use the excuse of your kids and this ice cream date to go see this fool and Maria. And you are standing there embarrassed, sad looking person. Just pathetic. Just, I mean, just a, just a, a pathetic spectacle. Just a sad, pathetic spectacle. And then she was like, and then, <laughs> and then she had the nerve to say, she will never, ever be around my kids. Never, ever. Oops. Maybe you should have told Michael that because she was around your kids. Not only was she around your kids, she was laying with your child and tweeted it out. And honey, put it on Instagram. We know that Michael and Sarah are still talking because they were seen leaving a liquor store just last week. I mean, the, it just just a mess. Okay, now it's going to become, you know, for the show. Okay, because see, they need the money. They like the money. Okay, because we is giving them a little bit of money. They like the little bit of celebrity. They're getting a little bit of fame. So they're going to keep doing this. It's just going to be a snowball effect. Now, next week is going to be a real shocker because somebody's going to be pregnant. Well, apparently Meg was pregnant. Okay, shout out to uh, Ra Ra for giving me this information. Meg was pregnant, but according to Meg, uh, Megan, uh, she had a miscarriage. Y'all, that's it. Did I miss anybody? Did I hit everybody? Okay. All right. Now, I know Foolery Friday did not go up yesterday because I had things to do yesterday. But it will be up tomorrow, Foolery Friday, on Sunday. And I got a little surprise for y'all. So, y'all be looking out for that. <clears throat> I hope you have a great weekend, a great rest of your Saturday. Be safe. And um, until next week, friends, bye.